Welcome back to Talk Today. It is 6.23. We'll have the papers in just a moment, but here's what else is coming up on the programme. We'll be heading to Cumbria just after 7.30, where thousands of residents remain without power after their properties were cut off by heavy snow. And the Wonka wake up <laughs> at 8.40, you tried saying that, <laughs> at 8.45, we'll ask whether old literature should be adapted for modern audiences after the release of the latest Roald Dahl movie. And we'll be finishing things at the High Court at 9.20, where Prince Harry resumes his battle with the Home Office after a decision was made to remove his police protection. Well, in the meantime, let's take a look at some of this morning's front pages, all focusing on the government's tough migration stance. Yeah, The Times, it lays out the Tories' new five-point plan, which includes tougher rules on working visas and bringing over relatives. The Telegraph says the Home Secretary plans could... Home Secretary's plans could cut arrivals by a quarter and see salary thresholds increased. And Access Denied blast the sun as they claim that enough is enough as the government plans to slash the influx of net migration by 300,000. Well, former Labour advisor Mike Buckley and broadcaster Emma Wolf are here with us for a look through this morning's papers. Uh, shall we start with you, Mike? Uh, we've been talking about it all morning so far. This is James Cleverly. He stood up. He was very late, by the way, into uh, the House of Commons yesterday. But he did stand up. He had another five-point plan. Um, <laughs> yeah. He says, enough is enough. I made the point. They've been there for 13 years and they've only just realised. Actually, when you look back at the numbers, they've they've gone up exponentially in the last few years um the front this is the front page of the daily mail it is so i mean it's uh, i don't know what you think about it um we may agree we may disagree i don't know but it's an absolutely catastrophic plan for the uk because all this is going to mean is more labor shortages more workers i disagree well you may well disagree mm -hmm. but i think obviously this is a desperate plea for votes they want to be able to go to the country and say look we're bringing migration down we're a government that's in control we know what we're doing but in the end, I think most voters are going to be far more concerned about the impact it's going to have on the NHS, on social care, on other key sectors, where, quite frankly, we have labour shortages that are already huge. People need the NHS to work. They need social care to work. They're not going to work, because, which is, again, due to the government's fault. They haven't been training enough workers for donkey's years, ever since they came into power, basically. We've got massive labour shortages. The only way to meet them is through inward migration with people who were already trained. No, it's not. That, that yeah, was a good effort, isn't it? Yes, it is, because you cannot train a midwife now, or a nurse now, or a doctor we're, now. We're, we're not, not just talking now. about that. We're okay. talking about chefs, we're talking about bricklayers. So there are many midwives who've left the profession due to the appalling pay. All we need to do, actually, is to start paying the caring professions, which rely massively at the moment on um, inward migration, we need to start paying people properly. Why should young people, why would they want to uh, go and work in care homes, which is hard physical labour, mm. it's emotionally draining, physically draining. Why would you want to go and do that for minimum wage? We just need to have... Do you need to pay the better, better, but there's simply, certainly in terms of the skilled professions, as in nurse, midwife, doctor, consultant, there's simply not in, there are not enough people in the UK with those skills who have been trained to do it. So if we want those positions to be filled, and we want to go to the NHS, we want an elderly relative to go to social care, we need to bring people into the country. This is just going to make lives people worse in the UK. I would agree with you that the NHS needs root and branch reform, but I think this plan is an absolute... People. This is an but, absolute... But can I just well, jo jump NHS. in and talk yeah. about the shortage occupation list, which is what they've been bringing people in to do? We're talking about chefs, bricklayers, electricians, welders, health and social mm -hmm. care workers. You have to look. We've got 3.5 million people in this uh, country on out-of-work yes. benefits. We've got 8.7... What's our plan to get them back? Back into work. Pay them more money. Exactly. Well, pay them more money. But also, uh, there are also people saying, "Hang on a minute. Why are people, if they're not sick, if they're not, if they're not, if they're not disabled, why are they on out of work benefits? No, I'm, why I'm not with you teach on that. them a trade? The best thing for your mental health and for young people and for the benefit totally. system is to get them into work. But Being when a bricklayer or an electrician is very, very satisfying power? and can be lucrative. G totally with you on that one. But when will this come into effect? Exactly. Spring is what they're saying. Spring. And do you think by spring we're going to have trained up no enough way. people to make up for the deficit of people who aren't going to come? Of course we're not. No. Nowhere near. It's an absolute And nonsense. I would love social, social care workers to be paid better, but that entails root and branch reform of the system, which this government is not willing to go anywhere near. It entails funding the system properly, which they're not going to go but, anywhere but, near. But I think what is interesting in terms of the election that's forthcoming is that I do believe that this election will be about immigration. Massively. That is what everyone yeah. is talking economy. about. Well, it's yeah. going to be about the cost, cost of living. It's going to be about public services not 
they're working. all linked. So if you've got unfettered access to this country, we don't have the schools, we don't have the hospitals, we are, we actually the can't pressures cope. On our public services. What about GPs? Huge. You can't see a GP. Exactly. But I, I mean, I just think that's fundamental because there aren't enough GPs you, because they're not bringing in enough GPs. You clearly think that people coming into the country using public services means that public services doesn't work. That isn't true. People coming into the country to work in social services is what makes them what, work. Bringing their entire families with them. Of course, bringing their entire families. Well, with I don't them. move to do you, Edinburgh do you remember, and take my family with I mean, me. But it's a million years no, ago now. Do you ludicrous. remember when the Tory party used to be the party with the family? Now they are the party that's bringing up families. I just I think that's families. absolutely apparent. If you want people to come and work here, of course they're going to bring that you want to going to bring their families with them. Otherwise, they're just not going to come. And fine, families, but it creates... It's not entire families. It's not cousins and extended families. It's, but it you know, creates, it's exactly. dependents and But it and creates spouses. major pressure on schools and health, specifically, when you bring children who aren't contributing to the workforce. The problem in our country is lack of training of staff and lack of investment in public services. But, but, so, but, but, not but immigration. To blame immigration is simply a fast But, but you're but, arguing against yourself. So no, you're saying we're bringing in all this labour from overseas. Emma's point is, let's train the people in this country, pay them pay Properly. them properly and they will then take those jobs. I agree. It would be wonderful if we did that. But we haven't been doing that for 13 years. You cannot do it overnight. Mm. I, I think, I mean, there is a big problem. I think there's a problem with us taking trained people from other countries where really they should be working over there. I mean, I feel conflicted about that. However, I live here, my family's here, my friends are here. You know, we're all here. I also want social care and the NHS to work in this country as well. This is a long-term problem. We can remedy it. Almost certainly when we get a new government, we start training nurses and doctors and consultants again. Maybe the answer, guys, is sending more Brits abroad. But we're going to move on to the next story. Emma, you've got the front page of The Telegraph. Yeah, this is really quite a sinister story. So according to The Telegraph, investors with prior knowledge of the Hamas attacks on October the 7th were basically short selling. So they made tens of millions of pounds uh, short selling Israeli stocks in the days leading up to the attack, which I think is appalling that you can imagine anybody knowing about these attacks and not only making money on it, but not mentioning it. So there was a significant sudden spike in sales of Israeli Israeli stocks and also weird activity on the US market. And this mm. is like, you know, quite a it's um, the Robert Jackson Jr. of New York University School of Law and also Columbia Law School. They've looked wow. at the financial activity and they've traced, they say they think it's informed traders who were anticipating and profiting from those attacks. And any any word on how they were informed or what they they just was there. knew. They, they had links to, uh, to, to Hamas. And, and this, hasn't, this isn't the first time this has happened. This Back has happened April, before. When there was an attempted attack, um, there was similar activity noticed around that, although the attacks failed in, in April. And what's the it's criminal just... liability there? Is there any? You know, if you, presumably, if you're aware oh, of a, a, great a, a terrorist yeah. attack about to take place and you don't do anything to stop it, there, there must be some kind of culpability there. Well, must be, my main question in light of this is how on earth did these traders know and the Israeli Defence Forces not know? Yeah. That's a good Which I mean, opens I just, up, yeah. I mean, that is, what, that is one of the unanswered questions in all of this is, you know, Israel has had... You know, been famed for having, and as, as they've said, you know, for decades, you know, we're, we're in charge, we're in control, we know exactly what's going on, we've mm -hmm. got, you know, eyes everywhere. And for some reason, on October the 7th, they didn't know what was coming. I'm not suggesting that they did. Um, but that's, that's an unanswered question. Why didn't they? Particularly if traders on the New York Stock Exchange knew. You. I just, I just find that but, staggering. But the, the very idea that you profit from human misery. Oh, it's appalling. It's beyond my comprehension. It's absolutely exactly. horrific. But then exactly. there's arms, you know, people, in factories in our own country who are selling arms to... Well, it is. Israel and, and elsewhere, they're ultimately profiting over the death of, of innocent civilians at the same time. So it's, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm justifying no, this, no, by no, the way. I just not. mean we, we should apply that elsewhere as but, well. Uh, but I'm glad they've picked up on this yeah. because it needs to stop. Really, and, really and if important. This, there, and if there is a pattern of this mm. happening, then obviously um, exactly. it could happen again in the future. It's sickening, isn't it? Really sickening. Um, yeah, Mike, sickening. let's move on to the front page of The Times. Um, a more, more uh, very worrying news. Don't panic. But we do need to stock up on candles, on batteries and torches. Well, I mean, this is just a, yet more evidence this, this government is just not fit for purpose. <laughs> you know, instead of saying, oh, yes, well, a bad thing might happen, well, it's our job as the government's remain in control and make sure that it doesn't happen. Yeah. Let's put systems and structures in place. You know, Oliver Dowd and Deputy Prime Minister is supposed to say, you're on your own, guys. Go and buy a and wind up radio and you'll be fine. You know, in the event of nuclear maybe attack. Maybe he's got shares in Yankee Candle. He can even, well, maybe he he can has. even blame the I mean, Tories I just, for I this. I just find I this know. absolutely I love catastrophic. This. No, I love this. I have very nostalgic memories of all the lights going out when so I was about I. seven. Did and, you play Monopoly? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. And Dad going to the cupboards and pulling out candles and finding matches. I wouldn't know where the candles or matches are in our house, except for maybe scented candles. It sounds it so... Was it was really fun. fun. 
and I think bit of wartime spirit, lift our spirits with a bit of mince pies and. <laughs> what is Oliver Downing saying is, is going to cause this? This is not this. the modern world. Most countries don't do this. No. Most countries have systems and structures that work, well, and they live in 2023. Well, say We're saying let's go back to the 70s or the 40s because it well, was a barrel of arse. I, I think there <laughs> are. Sorry, two, this is just wrong with being prepared. There are two points. When I lived in the states, I did have to stock up on all this stuff because I lived somewhere where we had earthquakes. So we were used to having that kind of resilience. In terms of the infrastructure in this country, you're right. Yeah. We haven't invested in that infrastructure. For decades. We, we, yeah, exactly. We haven't, we're building all these wind turbines. We can't connect them to the national grid. Can't we need to store upgrade. the power once we've got it. We can't store it. anything. So it's all backwards. Because who sold it off? <laughs> it, does, it does come down to investment. Well, or does it say this fanciful net zero by 2050 is ridiculous and it needs to be <laughs> no, more phased? No, it phased. doesn't. Because if we don't stop climate change, human civilization comes to an end. We so contribute 1% of global emissions. This but country. we outsource a lot of our emissions. Doesn't matter, what is it? We're a high, we're a high Guys, emission country. Can we just focus on the story at hand? Yes, we can. What is this crisis? What am I missing? <laughs> well, there there, there is happen? no crisis. When is it happening? He's That's just saying, he's just saying, look, we're the government, but basically yeah. we don't know what we're doing. There might be some major instance. If there is, you're going to need a candle. So instead well, of saying, let's unpre- invest in the country, let's invest in infrastructure, let's invest in the energy just network any crisis. so they don't fall down, you know, he's it, it, not doing that. And this like, guy's he's not saying, saying that. that. He's you know, saying we, we are, there we are used, unforeseen events at our some country, time. We used to keep pace with other countries in terms of infrastructure and in terms of income. We now don't. We are now poorer than people in, you know, most of Europe. We're significantly poorer than people in the US. And we don't know because, you know, we don't go and live in those countries. But it is true that we're underperforming the, the average of the countries that we compare ourselves to, like France, like Canada, New Zealand, etc. Isn't isn't the issue? We don't have joined up infrastructure in this country. So this move, and I'll go back to this, the move to electric vehicles, where we Absolutely can't ludicrous. charge it, I mean, we don't have enough one energy. One charging point in an entire neighbourhood. There was some bloke on a, on a petrol forecourt the other day waiting in a queue of 20 people to charge up and they were all running out of power. I mean, this is ludicrous. Mm. You can't... You can't tell people they all have to switch to electric cars and then not provide the basic infrastructure. Like electricity. This is the problem with our net zero policies. We haven't got the basics there. Same with electricity. So you need to retrofit. You can't retrofit all the homes, but you need to have new standards so that all all new homes going forward are so built So you're with saying these. we need to introduce these things gradually and have a plan in place to make sure yes. we're not caught short? We can't just announce them. They need to have the like plans the immigration policy, Emma. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> David. No, no, no. But I would I, argue that I, stuff I, has been brewing for years. It isn't I just would agree with you, today. Emma. I'm ignoring these two. <laughs> and <laughs> you know what? I love a candle and I love a torch. No, Great. But, but, but just in terms... We should do tomorrow's Great show fun. by candlelight. But let's go back to that yes. energy gap which we have. If the government, indeed the opposition, if we'd had an energy infrastructure plan where we'd but bothered to build plan. nuclear power yes. stations... When I was a child, I went to see Sizewell, I think it was A in those days, the, the Magnox power station. We then built B. Why haven't we done any of that? Because we have Competent people running this country. Oh, I would agree that. wholeheartedly. We have we should have been, we we have have been building termism. nuclear. We have the constant panic about the next election, about popularity. We don't have a plan. I'm not anti net zero or anti green policies, but with a plan. Shall we move well, on? We've on reached the, a consensus. On the bright side, Labour does have a plan. So, but anyway, let's move on. There we go. We've reached on the bright side, consensus. Labour are not in power. I think, I think potentially we might agree. Give us a bit of time. With this <laughs> next story, please don't prove me wrong. Emma, oh, no. front page of the mirror. No. From Farage makes you kip. No. No. It's a, it's a good headline, but I don't agree. <laughs> so apparently, in, ITV insiders are saying that, that Nigel's been a real disappointment to them, that ITV bosses feel that their big money signing hasn't delivered. He's so boring. All he talks about is. Politics. He just talks about <laughs> Brexit and he talks about culture wars and he talks about interesting things. Apparently ITV don't like that. They don't like the fact that he doesn't have a favourite film or a favourite book or all those boring things that other people talk about. And um, yeah, he's got nothing to say on anything else or on celebrities or anything. So they're kind of a bit disappointed. It's, it's fascinating. Wow. I think it's not it just them, it's viewers that are disappointed as well because well, people are turning off in droves. But, but I, I have to say, I, I've, I've watched a couple of episodes with him in it. He actually, I thought, was a bit of a peacemaker with them. I thought he was very good with the other campmates. But also, uh, let's just move it on to the bigger issue here, which is uh, the Conservatives are very much running scared. We heard them saying that the Conservatives would, op- with, uh, would welcome Nigel Farage back with open arms into the Conservative Party. They're worried. Uh, what about Nigel? No, they're worried about Nigel Farage. When he comes out of the jungle, he has an increased following with younger people and so on. He, they're worried about the popularity. I will say this, Reform UK now at 11%. This puts pressure back onto the Tories. I would say he's got a following among young people. <laughs> Quite the opposite. <laughs> no. I mean, I think, I mean, I think and have I sincerely hope that Nigel no, Farage's time in the sun is over. 
that would be evidenced by the fact that people are just not watching I'm a Celebrity. I mean, too many people fewer, too many people fewer watched it, yeah. the launch show this year than last year. And ITV bosses are blaming that on the, Nigel, the fact that Nigel Farage is just a bit of a turn-off because people think he's toxic. And you, I would agree. No, look, they I said boring, not toxic. Well, no, but other critics have said that he was toxic. I think a turn-off. Yeah, and I, I haven't watched any of it. I normally watch it every year. I love it, but just because we're here at <laughs> stupid o'clock in the morning, I, I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. be able to sleep. Um, but from what yeah. the <laughs> chatter amongst the WhatsApp groups that I'm in, the, uh, the line has very much been, oh, he seems like an all right guy. OK, but, you know, politicians can be human beings as well. It shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. But also that he is really dull. And they kind of, if they were going to switch on and watch Farage, they wanted it to be a bit spicy and a little bit, you know, a bit of conflict there. And he hasn't brought that. So I can understand why bosses... Bottom. Did he bear his bottom? He did bear his bottom. He had a shower <laughs> and, they, and they filmed it. So, you know. Which he's not very he bought, pleased about. Is that worth oh, exactly. 1.5 million, though? Well, look, I think he clearly some thought of the people so. He clearly have I mean, he was complaining about being skin to every year, wasn't he? Many of the celebrities have absolutely nothing to say for themselves. I'd much prefer to chat to Nigel about well, Brexit. Maybe we should stick wars. to <laughs> GB News rather than ITV. Well, I'll tell you what, if you pay me 1.5 million, I'll bear my bottom. Me too. Um, <laughs> thank you very much indeed to both of you, Emma and Mike. They'll be back with us in just under an hour. Well,